In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add instructions on how to play your game right in your game so that when players reach your game in full screen mode, they will see what they need to do. So uh, first, make sure you load up the Scratch website. So we're going to go to scratch.mit.edu. And uh, as always, make sure you are signed in here because um, you don't want to have to start over. So after you're signed in, click on the folder that is my stuff, and it will show you all your Scratch projects. And you'll click on C inside next to your maze game or below your maze game. And we're going to go back to the stage for your instructions. So we, uh, we create the maze on the stage, and we're, that's where we're also going to type up your instructions. So you click on the stage over here. And then this is the area where you can add code to the stage, which we will have to do. But we need to go to backdrops. And um, the reason we named our maze maze in the in the very first video is because now we're going to make a new backdrop. So hover over, choose a backdrop, and click on paint. We're going to make a new backdrop, and we're going to name it instructions so that it's easy to add the code telling your, pro your project which background to load. It'll be easier to identify which backdrop is which if we name this instructions. Okay, and then on this, in this workspace here, or on the backdrop of your stage, the new backdrop, it's blank, we're going to click on the text tool like this, and uh, you can choose a color before you start. Uh, doesn't really matter what color. Red tends to show up pretty well on white. So I'll start with red. We'll see what that looks like. I'm going to click, click the text tool, click here, and I'm going to start typing up my instructions or directions. Okay, in this case, I'm going to say use the arrow keys to move the bear to the end, and unfortunately, the text editor in Scratch does not automatically wrap words, so I'm actually going to have to press the enter key or return. Let's start over. Use the arrow keys to move the bear to the end of the maze. Avoid touching the lines, or you, let's Press enter or return to push you to the next line, or you will have to start over. I'm going to add an exclamation point right there. And the way we actually start this game or set everything in motion to be able to win is that we press the space bar. So that would be our, that's a very important step. And for some of you, this will be the last step in your instructions. I'm going to type press, I'm going to put space bar in all caps. Press space bar to begin. And I'm going to go back and add the word the. Now, if you have added a timer or a lives counter, you should also include information about those in the instructions. For example, if you have five lives, you should add a line right here that says, you get five lives and if you lose a life when you're touching the line you would have to change avoid touching the lines or you will lose a life and have to start over okay uh, for this I'm just gonna go with a simple set of instructions right now or also if you did add a timer to your maze in the instructions is where you would say you have this is blank seconds, and actually seconds would need to go to the next line, seconds to complete the maze. In which case, blank would be however much time you gave the user. So if it was one minute, you would type 60 seconds to complete the maze. And uh, again, I'm just going to take that out. I'm just going with some very basic instructions. This is the bare, bare minimum that's required. We can... Um, you can move this around. You can resize the box a little bit to make your text bigger. You can also stretch text intentionally if you'd like. Uh, just 
Please make sure it's still easy to read. So I'm going to try to keep it somewhat proportional. And uh, right now this looks like a mess over here. So we're going to have to add some code to clean this up and for our directions and maze to switch at the appropriate time. First, I'm going to go to, while I'm still on the stage, uh, I'm going to go to code. And under looks, the very first code block says switch backdrop to instructions. And uh, that's just, it that will list, it says instructions because it's the instructions is what's currently highlighted. If I were to click on the maze and when I go back to code, um, actually, no, never mind about that. But anyway, we do need switch backdrop to instructions, and we're also going to need one for switch backdrop to maze, which is this block. We just have to change the drop down. And uh, we'll switch to instructions when the green flag is clicked, which is under events. And also under events is where the spacebar keys is where we see when space key is pressed. So we're going to attach that there. So now when the green flag is clicked, we see our instructions. And then when the space key is pressed, we'll see the maze. And you might have noticed that we also see, when the green flag is clicked, we also see the bear. And if your user had already played the game and they won, oh, I didn't press the space bar, but if you win is up there, um, that might also be in the way. So we're going to add some code to the bear and to these other sprites so that they are not on the screen when we're viewing our instructions. So I'm going to click the green flag. We should see our instructions. And at this point, it looks like only the bear is going to be an issue for us. So let's go to the bear. And all we simply need to do is say, from events, when the flag is clicked, let's go to looks. When the flag is clicked, let's hide the bear. And then when the space key is pressed, we'll show. Remember, anytime you have a hide, you're always going to have a show. So right now, the bear is hiding. Actually, the end is going to be an issue as well, but the bear is hiding until we press the space bar, and then the bear shows up. And uh, you saw it in another program where you use the backpack. I'm actually going to drop down this hide block right here so that we can switch to the end, and I can easily put that right there so that when I click the green flag, end is also hiding, and uh, we need to bring it back using events, when the space key is pressed, we need to go to looks and have that show. So, so when the space key is pressed, we need to show end so that we can, we have a target for our maze. Okay. We'll press the space bar. I see the bear. I see end. I'm going to move my bear to the end of the maze. And you win should appear. And then if I press the space bar, the bear will start, go back to the beginning and you could try again. So we should see you win. When I press the space bar, the bear, okay, the bear's not going back to the beginning. And that's okay because really you'll need to reset the program with the stop sign and green flag anyway, and we're back to the beginning. And so you would read the instructions because your user is going to see it like this. So your player would read the instructions. They would press the space bar to begin. Play your game. When they get to the end, it'll say you win. And then that's that.